Well, here we are with uh, Dr. David Hepburn at the Victoria Cannabis Bars Club, learning. Mm. So, uh, again, thanks for, for coming, Dave. And uh, tonight's uh, next question is uh, along a conversation that, that we had the last time we hung out, because we're actually friends, right? Right? Yeah, I, I, sure. So, no, um, we, we were talking about the difference between so. isolates yeah. and the entourage effect, right? Yeah. And yeah. And so uh, maybe if, if you could explain a little bit about what isolates and synthetics are and, and then the whole plant medicine. This is a, a real a can of worms here because uh, we would like to think that the whole plant derivative is more effective than the isolated uh, molecules. And again, it, now, is the isolated molecule effective? Yes, some of the synthetics are effective. Dronabinol is very effective. In fact, it's too effective at times. The people couldn't tolerate it because they just got too cycle uh, intoxicated by it. So does it work? Yes, it works. Um, but the entourage effect is, is the whole greater than the sum of the parts. In other words, do you have a positive effect from CBD on THC with some uh, Sousan Myrcene added in? All the different things, the kind of flavins that, that, that make up the plant. Is the plant smarter than us? Uh, or can, is it better for us to say, well, we know THC works on migraines. Let's, let's go get some THC and try that itself. Or for nausea, or for uh, uh, pain, or for whatever. So the ongoing debate now is that, although the entourage effect has seemed to have been sort of medical gospel for quite some time, being challenged and saying it's just as effective, if not better, sometimes to isolate the molecule and maybe combine them together. But there's been no scientific evidence that the entourage effect actually exists. That uh, we know that there is modulation. That if I gave you, say, seven and a half milligrams of THC and you were naive, you might start to feel it. But if I gave you seven and a half milligrams of THC and I gave you some CBD to go with it, you wouldn't feel it. So there's negative allosteric modulation we call it, where it changes what THC does. But <clears throat> is that entourage effect? Might be a bit of semantics, but I've had some debates with some people in Spain of recent uh, about just that effect. And what is the evidence of entourage? So again, uh, we know that epidiolex is an example of why our entourage is not that necessary because CBD, it works, it's 98% CBD and it works very well for, for seizures. But a lot of doctors also know that if you add a little THC or THCA to it, it works even better. So it's a very interesting field. Uh, more and more to come, as we understand, uh, if, it's the, if it's the isolated molecules uh, or if it's, in fact, the whole plant derivative that is the winner. Is there much of a difference between the, the, the isolates and synthetics then? Yeah, so a synthetic is, is something that is uh, made in the lab. Uh, where it, as an isolate is something that actually does come from the plant. Uh, so in some ways uh, they are similar to the fact that they're a single compound with stripped of all else. So that in, in, in that way they are similar but one is in fact plant derived and one is in fact a synthetic. But they should have the exact same medical? Uh, you know it's funny when you talk about isolate, isolate you're talking nowadays about CBD isolate which is so common because of the, all the hemp concerns in the states. The farm bill making hemp the only way to really be able to access CBD, so they form it from there, they isolate it, and now you've got isolate, which is now being touted to work for certain things. Uh, again, um, you know, I do recall studies out of Israel that showed that the area under the curve when it came to whole plant derivatives was, was wider, worked, worked more effectively. So, but a recent study on terpenes of this uh, 2019 showed that there was no benefit to having terpenes added to THC for its effect on pain. So, and this they did all six of the most common terpenes on this particular research. So it's it's still here with that. Okay, so we have some questions if you want to come up. Um, so my question relates to being a bartender so i have most access to cbd isolate from hemp so earlier in our discussions you talked about um, 
efficiency and effectiveness, but one of the things is also cost mm -hmm. when we're talking about medicine. So um, right now, CBD isolate is sold at a whole bunch of different prices all over the place. So that's one thing. But then I'm also thinking like, when we're talking about THC isolate, those mm -hmm. are expensive extracts. Yes. And um, are those even available anywhere? Does that come into play for accessibility? And then what about our other cannabinoids and those precision? Like I've never even seen a CBG mm -hmm. extract or so on and so forth. Does that technology exist? And so what are we talking about when we're talking about these isolates? So a lot of questions there. Uh, back to the CBG. No, but no, those are great, actually phenomenal questions. I'm going to go back to the CBG one first of all. CBG being non-psychoactive, it was, it was bred out of plants. It used to be in a much higher level than it is today. And now, so now, of course, now that the medical discoveries are happening, they're trying to get CBG back into the breeding program so that you can get a higher level of CBG and be able to use it for some of the things that it's showing promise for, which are completely different than what THC shows promise for, by the way. So that's just one example. But as far as the isolate prices, globally, they're starting to plummet, actually plummet because of hemp. So now you're seeing more hemp-derived CBD isolate. Uh, you don't get much THC isolate per se. It can be made; it's there, but I've not well, heard about heard it. Well, we THC diamonds. Diamonds, yes. Right. So yeah. isn't that a THC extract isolate? Is that THC or THCA? It's THCA diamonds. Big yeah, big. it's, it's a, THCA. Yeah. And then when we dab it, it turns into THC. Yeah, because it's THC. Yeah, but so, those are oh, yeah. they're still expensive extracts. They're right. like ninety dollars a gram, maybe sure. somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And you, they will probably remain more expensive because THC is illegal federally in the United States. Right. But CBD, as you see, with hemp derived, is the prices are subsequently dropping. Right. Yeah, for that. Good. I know that didn't answer everything that you threw up there. No, but that's a lot of what I was asking. Okay. Um, so for the CBD isolate versus um, broad spectrum versus ailments, can we say that it's varying? Um, efficiency by ailment like I personally do better by a broad spectrum because I do better by the entire plant medicine to reduce my pain versus some people are okay with just a CBD like seizures so would sure. it be by ailment um, also second part uh, hemp derived versus CBD bud derived what do you think is better Great questions. I'll take the second one first uh, because I remember that one. <laughs> no, it's CBD, <clears throat> medically speaking, if you can get it from the, the plant, the cannabis plant, as opposed to hemp, is better. Hemp is a bioaccumulator uh, and therefore they use it to clear fields of toxins and things. Uh, you have less of a terpene profile. You have less of the, <clears throat> the plant that you can actually bring out with, uh, with, uh, with uh, hemp. Mm -hmm. So from a medical perspective, we would say, Given the choice, go with the cannabis plant. So basically, the yeah. cannabis plant is more broad spectrum than a hemp. It is, and, and, it's, and it's not a bioaccumulator of toxins either. Mm -hmm. So there are reasons why we would suggest that that's the preferred mm -hmm. over hemp. Um, <clears throat> your first question was in regards to something else. Efficiency versus uh, yeah, for different, different conditions. Different ailments, yeah. So you know, we know in this in medicine that if I had ten people lined up here with the same problem and gave them the same medication, the same dose, we could have 10 different responses. Okay. So this has to do with your genetics, has to do with your uh, sex, has to do with your hormone levels, your, your enzyme levels, mm -hmm. your age, your other medications. There could be many factors that determine how person A responds from person B with the exact same problem, the exact same medication. So again, it's always good to find the sweet spot for what you can for your condition. And you're right, for some, CBD epidiolex works beautifully, for others it doesn't. Uh, so again, it is something that a different individual will find the sweet spot with respect to percentages, with respect to dosages, and delivery mechanisms. So these are things that they will eventually determine what works best for them. And I'm sure you know people who come in here, they know what works best for them already. Mm -hmm. Because it's been, but it's been through trial and error that they found out, which is why I've always had patients diarize their responses. Totally. Like you did to yourself with, with uh, knowing I the difference. I think that's also where bud tenders come in. Yeah. Like, yeah. Perfect. Which will bring us to our next question and last question as well. So sure. Pause it and well, thank you so very much again. Again, kid.